Namibia, President Haig Geingob passes away at the age of 82. Namibia's President Haig Geingob passed away at 82 while undergoing medical treatment in Windhoek. A prominent figure in Namibia's fight for independence, Geingob disclosed his cancer diagnosis a month before his death. Dr. Hage G. Geingob, the President of the Republic of Namibia, has passed on today, Sunday, 4 February 2024, at about 00 hours 04 at Lady Pohamba Hospital. At his side was his dear wife, Madam Monica Gaingos, and their children. The medical team, as I informed the nation only yesterday, has been trying its utmost best to ensure that our president recovers. Regrettably, notwithstanding the team's spirited effort to save his life, suddenly, fellow Namibians, he passed on. The Namibian nation has lost a distinguished servant of the people, a liberation struggle icon, the chief architect of our constitution, and the pillar of the Namibian house. At this moment of deepest sorrow, I appeal to the nation to remain calm and collected, while the government's attempts to all necessary state arrangements, preparations, and other protocols. Cabinet will convene with immediate effect in order to make the necessary state directives in this regard. May the soul of our beloved Dr. Hage G. Gainkop rest in eternal peace. Vice President Nangolo Mbumba succeeded him and will hold office until the upcoming elections later this year. Mbumba, sworn in swiftly after Gaingob's death, acknowledged the weight of responsibility and praised Gaingob's leadership in maintaining national calm and stability. Gaingob, president since 2015 and a key political figure since Namibia's independence in 1990, faced health challenges undergoing cancer treatment in the U.S. Global leaders expressed condolences, lauding Geingob's role in securing Namibia's freedom. Cyril Ramaphosa, South Africa's president, hailed him as a liberation veteran. Geingob, a Swapo party stalwart, fought against apartheid, spending 27 years in exile before returning in 1989, a year before Namibia gained independence. Despite Geingob's achievements, his popularity declined, reflected in reduced electoral support and challenges during his tenure. Economic stagnation, unemployment and corruption scandals, including the fish rot affair, contributed to public discontent. By 2021, concerns about the country's direction had increased, signalling shifts in Namibian political dynamics. As SWAPO's candidate for the upcoming elections, Natumbo Nandi Ndaitwa, now vice president, may become Namibia's first female president if successful. Gaingob's death marks the end of an era and prompts reflections on his legacy amid evolving political dynamics in Namibia. Hag Gaingob, a legacy of leadership, liberation, and diplomacy in Namibia. Hage Gaingob, born on August 3, 1941, in Otavi, southwest Africa, now Namibia, was a prominent Namibian politician, liberation fighter, and diplomat who left an indelible mark on the nation's history. Serving as the third president of Namibia, Gaingob played a pivotal role in in the country's journey towards independence from South African rule. Early life and education, Haig Gaingob belonged to the Ovambo ethnic group, the largest ethnic community in Namibia. His educational journey began at Augustineum Training College in Komastal, Windhoek, where he received his secondary education. Eager to broaden his horizons, Geingob pursued higher studies abroad, obtaining a bachelor's degree from Fordham University 
in the United States. His academic pursuits continued with a master's degree from Temple University in Philadelphia and culminated in a PhD in international relations from the University of Leeds in the United Kingdom. Political Activism and Liberation Struggle During the tumultuous 1960s, Geingob became deeply involved in anti-colonial and anti-apartheid activism, joining the Southwest Africa People's Organization, SWAPO, a nationalist movement dedicated to ending South African rule, he emerged as a critical figure in SWAPO's diplomatic endeavours to garner international support for Namibia's independence. In 1964, Geingob became SWAPO's representative to the United Nations, tirelessly advocating for Namibia's cause on the global stage. Exile and Diplomacy Geingob endured years in exile, representing SWAPO across various countries including Botswana, the United States and the United Kingdom. His diplomatic efforts significantly contributed to the United Nations' recognition of SWAPO as the sole legitimate representative of the Namibian people. Return to Namibia and political career. In 1989, a year before Namibia gained independence from South African rule, Gengob returned to his homeland. In independent Namibia, he assumed crucial roles in the government, including Minister of Housing and Social Welfare. Geingob's political trajectory saw him serve as Prime Minister from 1990 to 2002, making him one of Namibia's longest-serving Prime Ministers. Presidential career On March 21, 2015, Haga Geingob was sworn in as the third President of Namibia, succeeding Hifikapunye Pohamba. His inaugural victory reflected overwhelming support, securing 87% of the vote. However, his presidency faced economic issues, high unemployment and corruption scandals. Later years and legacy, seeking re-election in 2019, Geingob secured a reduced majority of 56%. Despite criticism, he retained influence in Namibian politics until his passing on January 29, 2023. Haig Geingob's legacy encompasses political activism, diplomatic prowess, and leadership in Namibia's struggle for independence and subsequent development in the post-independence era. His contributions will be remembered as integral to shaping Namibia's path towards a brighter future. This underground. I, he came, he talked to me, again to me, and said, time has run so quickly, and I could agree with that too. And the rest of them are confidential things we discussed. Mm -hmm. And then we came to the conclusion, I said, now you have been all your time in the, time in the bush, some of your colleagues have been there 20 years and later on became them limited uh, presidents. To give you extra five years to sort things out as you are saying, I'm, I'm going to pull it. And I, we didn't change the term limit clauses. The constitutional transitional clause, which says the first president shall be elected by constituent assembly mm -hmm. and shall serve for two five-year terms. We only put three five-year term. So are you suggesting, in fact, that uh, Pierre Nkurunziza, president of Burundi, probably, might in fact have borrowed a leaf from Namibia? Well, why not? If he, because is it done for the good cause? Today, I'm the third president. Supposing we made a mistake there. Constitution that we were going to count on was in English, not even internalized by the masses. That's how sometimes we impose things and when things go wrong in Africa, they say, look at Africans. I averted that. Today we have a thriving democracy. Let's talk about uh, the issue of poverty. Uh, the first lady, Monica, uh, says that uh, you are very, very sincere, really, uh, that uh, it is from your heart that you would like to see co you know, uh, poverty not, uh, no not alleviated, not curbed, but eradicated. Tell us about that. Well, firstly, Namibia is a rich country. 
Everybody says that. But inequality in Namibia is about the worst in the world. Now, when in a small population, so when I'm thinking of this vast country, it's true, it's dry country, but a small population like this, we shouldn't sit do halfway things. Why should I say half a poverty is good, then no poverty? Say eradication. Of course, we'll go step by step. Eradication. And as condemned by my colleagues, mm -hmm. where have you ever eradicated poverty? And after that, we came here, and the UN adopted to eradicate poverty in 2030. Mm -hmm. I went back and said, you see? And I'm saying ours must be eradicated in 20, 20, 2025. 2025. What specific steps have you taken uh, so that people, in fact, uh, might not end up saying, hey, President you know, Hage is simply talking the talk. But yes. can he really walk that talk so that Namibians can walk the walk? That's a problem. We discuss it sometimes. We Africans have good, glossy papers. We talk. But the implementation is a problem. And I set up this uh, four-year plan, Harambe Prosperity Plan. And first thing is governance architecture. Mm -hmm. We in Africa have a problem of accountability and transparency. So I have a formula, a mathematical formula. A plus uh, accountability, responsibility, accountability equals trust. Mm -hmm. So I say if we are accountable, we are transparent, A plus T equals TR. Accountability plus uh, accountability and uh, uh, hmm, transparent. Transparent. Accountability, transparency equals trust. Africans have lost trust in many of us as leaders. We are not accountable, we are not transparent. So first thing I did is to declare. You need to deliver. In fact, you declared your assets and wealth. Yes. Why did you do that? In fact, it's not a requirement. It's, it's not, not a legal requirement. It's not required. No, maybe. Some people see me in these suits which I like to wear, and they think maybe I have a lot of money. Or and you have incredible illegal, <laughs> Thank you. you illegal money. Them. So I said best is to start on the top. I'm talking about accountability, transparency. Let me be transparent. And I did that with Trans Pricewaterhouse Coopers. One guy came from America who was part of the reviewing. I opened up. Even they were saying I have foreign accounts. I was a UN secretary at staff member. I have my credit union account with I'm not going to close. Mm. All of them banks were there, whatever remains there. And they did their own checkup, and that's what I did. My wife joined me too because it was good for her to do that. But it was not trying to be a holier than thou. It's just to start with what I'm talking about, trying to walk the talk by saying I'm going to trans be transparent so that I can hold the others also accountable and be transparent. How do I tell the ministers to do this and this? If I don't, they don't know what I have. have they, how have they reacted? Excellent. Terrific. Excellent. You know, I was doing my homework and uh, I discovered that uh, you have done reasonably well in terms of, in fact, alleviating poverty because uh, you have, in fact, lifted anywhere between 400,000, okay. 500 people from poverty uh, do you think uh, that is enough for the last 25 years that you have been politically independent? Look at Brazil, for example, Lula da Silva, mm -hmm. a man who tried the presidency three times and got it on the fourth time, and event eventually, in fact, ended up being perhaps the best president that Brazil has ever had. And this is a man who actually never went through formal education. Mm -hmm. He lifted more than 20 million people from poverty in eight years. Well, I don't know about that. Firstly, is it better to have 500,000 than zero? We have done that. It was a beginning. We are doing it. But I don't think that having zero lifting is better than 500,000. So I'm happy with that. Besides that, it's an ongoing struggle. The Brazilian situation how old are they? How many years? We are only 
that time about 25 years. 25. Yeah. And we come from a different background of racial discrimination, apartheid, and we have to first maintain peace too. Also, Brazil has a bit of that too. Yes, but uh, the way they, where they, where they oppress that way, oh, where, yeah. they, where they oppress, where the blacks, they oppress by foreigners from outside. Namibia, we have white who came, who suppressed the blacks. They have the same situation because, uh, in fact, the vast majority of the political elite in Brazil over the years are descendants of Portugal. And uh, most of the poor people, in fact, are descendants of Africa who had actually Brazil found their way there through slavery. We are, we are working think, on this. I think yeah. you're fine. Mm -hmm. Well, you are tuned into Straight Talk Africa. We'll have more of a discussion in a moment. But first, here is Maria Majero. 